So at 48 minutes, I ran out of uh, computer space and uh, couldn't finish the presentation. So I'm going to finish here with a second piece. I don't know if I'll be able to load both. But anyway, I apologize. Uh, technology is not one of my gifts. So uh, I'll do what I can here. The last point under privatized contractual polity. Once we transferred our allegiance, if you will, from God to the state over a period of 120 years or so, more and more. And now in the last five years, it started with Obama in, in, in earnest uh, in a hundred executive orders and now under Trump it's just an abrogation of the constitutional order which is simultaneous with an abrogation of our moral and divine order. Some of what I've said today gives you I hope a little bit better idea of why America is falling apart and and I think it's inexorable unless we get back to some real basic understandings, which is why I've gone to all this trouble to give you some of that, best I can. In some then, in the contemporary American political landscape, it is the notion of, now listen, this is brilliant. Man, I, I did jump out of my chair when I read this from uh, the author. Freedom and liberty, it is the notion of freedom and liberty, capital F, capital L, that perhaps reigns supreme in America above all. To this day, now listen to his conclusion. Having unhooked definitions of freedom and liberty from Hashem, from Adonai, from Sinai, It almost undoubtedly stands as the fundamental American idea. When you ask people what's America about, freedom, liberty. And American exceptionalism. Can't forget that. Becomes unmediated by the church, the true church. Not what we see around us. and unmoored from the biblical narrative. The danger is that the nation will not only be a substitute church, but a substitute God. Our freedom itself becomes the American idol. And I'm not talking about the TV show. Freedom as our idol. Forgetting the author of it. You know, that's just profound. Last thoughts. I want you to understand I got to wrap it up here. I, I've mentioned it before, Richard Weaver, uh, in his great book in uh, 1949, Ideas Have Consequences. We have to understand that the great spiritual war that I've tried to describe a little bit about is really a spiritual origin played out on the field of ideas ideas that's the battle so i'm going to quote a couple of scriptures to make the point in the context now that i've tried to to lend this is from colossians 2 1 corinthians 10 and ephesians 6 in sort of a, a combination of similar points listen see to it that no one carries you off as spoil or makes you yourselves captive by his so-called philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit, idle fancies and plain nonsense following human tradition or men's ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world, just crude notions invented by humans. Inasmuch as we refute, are to refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing, idea that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ. That's the, get, the battle we're engaged in right now, beloved. It is. And why, again, Paul spent so much time on anchoring and ensuring and solidifying sound doctrine, the right ideas which govern the lives of the church. 
This is so huge, it's beyond my ability to express it. That's why I repeat it so much. And then coming, Rooster's coming right home to America. You know what? I'm going to quote the quote that isn't exactly traceable to Sinclair Lewis, who originally wrote this in his book, It Can't Happen Here in 1935. Oh, yes, it can. And he wrote it in the midst of the beginning of the rise of the Third Reich in Germany. Here's the original quote, and then I'll give you the paraphrase. But he saw, too, that in America the struggle was befogged by the fact that the worst fascists were they who disowned the word fascism and preached enslavement to capitalism under the style of constitutional and traditional Native American liberty. From that root comes this saying, when fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and, the, and carrying a cross. Let me say that again. When fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carrying a cross. Hello? Do you see it? Do you hear it? Do you watch it? Probably shouldn't say this. I can watch a guy, saw several of them in the past few days, riding in their pickups, two big flags streaming from the back of their pickup. I can fairly presume where they stand politically and spiritually. Maybe unfair, but I've been around a long time, boys and girls, since the days of Howdy Doody. So I finish with uh, a return to Augustine's two cities and contend that since the very beginning, those two cities the city of God and the city of man are battering heads, battering heads. Like two great rams throughout history. Which reminds of a pertinent scripture, more hopefully, reminiscent of Eric Sauer's epochal breach. I'll close with this. And your ancient ruins, this is from Isaiah 58, 12. And your ancient ruins, if you do this right, and your ancient ruins will, shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of buildings that have laid waste for many generations. And you shall be called in such an instance, repairer of the breach, restorer of the streets to dwell in. But only if we truly, deeply, and sincerely want it, beloved. Only then. Otherwise, the judgment. And yes, time is running so short. Close in prayer. Father, I'm sorry about the uh, segmentation of the presentation. We'll try to do the best we can with it. Even if I can't uh, add this second part, at least the first part, I sensed your presence and I don't want to do this all over again. Uh, I thank you and pray you to restore that which has been lost clearly by the enemy and my short-sightedness on technological matters. But thank you and praise you for what we did, uh, that we were able to achieve today. These are huge ideas. And I thank you that even though they're above my pay, way above my pay grade and, and my beloved audiences, uh, with your help, we can grasp, we can understand, we can, we can comprehend the uh, critical hour of our times and know what to do. We can tell America what it needs to do. I thank you and praise you for your goodness your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. I'll see if I can fix all this.